You're watching WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon. Welcome back to WKYT News. We're approaching 1230. Bill Bryant and Barbara Bailey reporting, and we're tracking a crime alert in Clark County where police say a jogger was sexually assaulted. The sheriff's office says a man attacked the woman Saturday morning on the Veterans Memorial Bypass. Hillary Thornton is tracking the situation and joins us now with our top story. The Clark County Sheriff says they always ask folks out walking and running to be aware and alert of their surroundings. Now, as they investigate the sexual attack of a jogger here in town, they're asking that everyone be extra vigilant. Around 7:30 Saturday morning, the Clark County Sheriff says the victim's routine run along the Veterans Memorial Parkway took a scary turn when a man attempted to sexually assault her. Sheriff Burl Purdue says the woman in her mid-30s fought back, causing the attacker to take off. Investigators believe he was walking in the area and are unsure if he had a vehicle close by to help get away, but say that is something they are looking into. Meanwhile, as they search for the man responsible, Sheriff Purdue is reminding those who are out of some tips to help protect themselves. To try to have a partner or partners to walk, run with them. It just makes it safer, period. You know, that's the day and age that we live in now. Uh, if you must walk by yourself, then we uh, discourage the use of headphones or anything that would uh, take away your attention and awareness of any situation that could be dangerous. Anyone with information about this attempted sexual assault is asked to contact the sheriff's office. In Clark County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. The sheriff says the suspect is African American in his mid 20s with short dreadlocks, wearing a long sleeve t shirt and sweatpants with a line down the sides. We've learned the identity of a woman killed in a Lexington house fire. Her family says 63 year old Patricia Washington died in that fire that broke out around 8 o'clock last night in a duplex along Clay's Mill Road, not far from Harrodsburg Road. Firefighters were able to extinguish the flames quickly, but when they went inside, they found the woman's body. Firefighters tell us it appears as though there were no smoke detectors working in the duplex. We encourage everybody to change their detectors twice a year when you change your clocks. That's just an easy way to remember. Firefighters also told us that Washington relied on an oxygen tank and that paramedics had been called to that scene before. Richmond police have arrested a fugitive wanted in Pennsylvania on robbery and theft charges and in Louisiana for parole violation. 30 year old Robert Fleming has been charged with receiving stolen property and illegal possession of a firearm. Richmond police say they made the arrest after investigating a tip that Fleming was wanted in other states. Police say Fleming was arrested without incident. The trial for William Porter begins today. He is one of the six Baltimore police officers charged in the death of Freddie Gray. In April, Gray died from injuries he suffered in the back of a police van. Six city officers are charged. Porter is the first to stand trial. Craig Boswell has that story. Demonstrators gathered outside the courthouse as Baltimore braced for the first of six trials in connection with the April arrest and death of Freddie Gray. We want convictions and we want jail for killer cops in Baltimore City. Officer William Porter faces manslaughter and other charges for his alleged role in the death of the 25-year-old who died of spinal injuries while in police custody. Prosecutors say Gray was illegally transported without a seatbelt and Porter should have sought medical attention when Gray showed signs of distress. The six officers involved will all have separate trials. Many believe what happens with Porter's trial will set the tone in a fragile city that exploded with violence after Gray's death. I think people are willing to let the judicial process go forward. We're waiting to hear the truth. We're waiting to hear what happened to Freddie Gray and what evidence the prosecution will present. Once selected, the 12 jurors will not be sequestered but must remain anonymous. Porter faces up to 10 years in prison if convicted of the most serious charges. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Baltimore. Officer Porter's attorney has said it will be impossible to find an impartial jury in Baltimore. Porter has pleaded not guilty. State officials gathered for a ribbon cutting ceremony in Bourbon County this morning to celebrate the completion of a reconstruction project. US 68 has been widened from two to four lanes between Paris and Millersburg. That covers six miles. The cost of the project, $26.5 million. It took nearly three and a half years to complete. This is really 
is an economic engine for this region. Travel from Maysville to Lexington is significant for this region of the state. And so it's very important that we have a modern highway connecting Millersburg, Kentucky to Paris, Kentucky. Highway 68 is also known locally as Maysville Road. It has been open to traffic since 1835. That's 180 years. An early morning accident here in Lexington sent two people to the hospital and tied up traffic on a busy artery. Two trucks collided around 8.30 this morning at the intersection of Winchester Road and Executive Drive. Traffic was tied up for quite a while as police worked to clean up the crash site. Both drivers went to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Some breaking news this afternoon that will sadden barbecue fans here in Lexington. Business Lexington is reporting that Billy's Barbecue in Chevy Chase has closed its doors. The restaurant is selling its location to Louisville-based Joella's, or Joella's, I guess you pronounce the J, Joella's uh, Chicken. According to Business Lexington, no comments from either of the parties involved, but Two weeks ago, Joella's announced that it was expanding to Lexington in what it called an iconic location. So we now have that information. And that is an iconic location, yes. WKYT needs your help in making the holidays a little brighter for some Kentucky children. Starting at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, you can drop off toys, clothes, food, and other items right here at the WKYT studios on Winchester Road. It's for the Mission of Hope Christmas Collection. Those goods will go to children in some of the neediest parts of Kentucky in Appalachia. And if you can't make it out here, you can also donate money online. Always uh, certainly a great project, and uh, looking forward to that tomorrow morning, bright and early. Coming up, how a sick child can affect the entire family. That's one of the stories still to come on WKYT News at 1230. Extremely light rain mist drizzle outside this afternoon. But then we head off into the night and into tomorrow, and that's when the real rain actually picks on up. I'll get into that forecast coming up.